Oh, right on time too. Look at that. So you can assume that they can hear us. I just can't see you right now or see anyone for that matter, but okay. I'm gonna have a sip of my cocktail because I deserve it right yes. now. Yeah. <laughs> we are officially live. Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart with the Ted Show. Um, still dealing with these crazy little technical things that come up in my world, but I'm super, super excited to have Dana Rice with Dana Rice Music on the show today. Welcome, Dana. Hi, Ted. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you. So we're going to do this little song and dance where I share this to um, my pages uh, okay. because I can't go on the Ted Show page for some strange reason. Uh, and so this is my new normal right now. <laughs> so if you can share it to your page, that would be awesome. Um, it's crazy technology, right? Aren't you yeah. glad you're in music and not technology? Uh, well, music and technology well, kind of go together. It's all going together now. All <laughs> right, so we're, we're officially shared. All right, so thanks for being patient, guys. Thanks, Dana, for being on the show. Uh, we met, or we have, this is our first meeting, but we know each other because of Hap, Hap McMullen, right? Yes. Yeah. He's Mich awesome. Commissioner McMullen with Hapco Music Foundation, all of the amazing things that he does. He's a lovely human being, yes, absolutely lovely human being. So, um, so kudos to him. So we love to learn about the guest. And since this is our first meeting, I really want to learn about Dana Rice. So give us a little bit of background on you. Uh, so I always love music, love to sing, love to, you know, just entertain people. And um, I started, when I was two years old and people say, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I want to be a singer. <laughs> and my you have the living room like, songs you did? Did you sing in the living room for everybody? You I'm have an everywhere. audience? And, and there used to be like, when you go to the malls and stuff, there used to be like three mirrors in the dressing room. So you could yeah. see like multiples of yourself and I'd be in there just going away, <laughs> you know, all three of me, you know? <laughs> nice, I so, love it. You were uh, a born star. Yeah, so eventually, you know, one thing led to another and lots of lessons and all that. Um, but I just saw how uh, impactful music was on people. Um, you know, how it can make you laugh when you were crying or how it can make you, you know, tap into your deeper emotions. And I, I saw that as just being so powerful and I wanted to be a part of it. And uh, so I like to give... Um, people of all ages really, but I, I have a, a really big spot for children, um, probably because I started this as a child. And so my um, goal is to just give the gift of music to um, people. So tell me about the childhood stuff, because a lot of us think that we can sing as children, right? We all have, I think most of us who had, who were, weren't shy, did some sort of show for our parents or family or church or wherever you were at. Uh, and so I, just, I definitely have memories of doing shows, singing my whole life. But then you don't take, I didn't take that into a career, thankfully for everybody involved. How did you, how did you get to the point where you're in, this is what you're doing? Uh, well, probably if you ask my family, they would say that little girl could not sing. <laughs> and they used to be like, oh my gosh, you really need to do something about that. But I just loved it. And so every ch chance I got, I would do it. And thankfully, my mom saw it in me. And one day she dragged me to a children's choir rehearsal, but I was shy. And so I didn't, I was like, I don't want to go. Um, but it just kept going and going. And then one day um, I was in high school and I had been in performing arts school for some years. And uh, one of my aunts said, oh, you learned how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Family's great, isn't it? They're awesome. Yes, they are. <laughs> so you, you were in performing arts school. Did you ever want to venture off into other parts of performing arts or just focused on music? Did you want to go to Broadway? Did you want to record an album, uh, go on tour? What were some of your dreams as far as the, the music goes? All of that. I all of it? Watching, uh, all of it, all of it. I don't know if you remember the TV show Fame. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Allen and everybody, and so I just saw that and I was like, that's the world I wanna be in, you know? And I couldn't find that world anywhere around me, but in my mind, I was gonna be in that world. And then there was um, Nell Carter in um, uh, Give Me a Break, 
And yep. they had an episode one time and she was singing on Broadway. And I didn't even know what the heck Broadway was at that time, but I was like, I'm going. And so, yes, always wanted to do the writing, the singing, the recording, all of it. Um, and so I, I have in some small ways done a lot of those things. So, and then the things that I didn't do personally, my students and my kids have been able to do it. So that's the joy of the teaching part of music, so. Do you get to, could you, you just mentioned that you write, so you write music as well? You write songs? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, I do. I, um, so what's the, what's the, I wanna to get to the education part, but I'm always fascinated by the personal part. What's the outlet for you? Teaching's one thing, but your creative outlet, as far as your voice goes, do you perform anywhere? Do you um, uh, do charity events? Do you go out, uh, do some sort of singing events, paid, paid events? What do you do for that part of your talent? Well, that part of my talent um, often takes a backseat to the teaching part, but I do perform. Um, I don't have a regular gig. Students not being able to come to you. Um, how has that worked for you? What have you done differently? Uh, well, everything's different. Um, actually, about two days before the quarantine started, I had just completed a, a makeover in my, my studio. And I got everything ready, so ready for all the kids and, and the adults, all the students to come and, you know, be in the place. And then we were back home. Um, but of course, I keep a studio here at the house. And I've always done some form of online teaching, but it's just been for emergencies. You know, you can't make it or something like that. So now we're 100% online. Um, and it's having some, I, I will say, I still prefer the 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 face-to-face -face sure. contact. There have been some good things that have come out of it. I see families doing more music together. I see kids um, being more focused because honestly, it's harder to learn online. Well, to learn what I do because it involves a lot of tactile um, skill. And so they're having to focus in more and because they're quarantined, they have lots of time to practice. Yeah, so. <laughs> they sure do. No excuse now. Yeah. So what yeah, do you? So what what age good. group do you prefer? Are you are you are you dealing with first time kids? Like, do, can can a child come in and they've only done the living room show, and the parents think that they should get voice lessons, and they can come to you? Yes, I um, do a lot of work with beginners. Um, I'm really um, I love to introduce you know, the gift of music to people. But I am also really into the, the child who, like I was, knows within them that I should be on a stage. I should be on camera. This is what I want to do. I don't quite know how to do it yet, but I see me there. And those are the kids that I, I really gravitate to the most. So have you ever had a, uh, and you don't have to answer this, but I'm always, I, I have had, people who teach music, who teach, give voice lessons before. Have you ever had anyone that came in and you thought, wow, God, this is my, this one's my challenge. This is, um, <laughs> what am I working with here? Because it, you know, it's just like the American Idol, uh, in my mind, it would be like the American Idol trials where people have told kids that they can sing their entire lives. And apparently everyone around them was tone deaf. Um, and so you have somebody that has a passion for it, that loves to sing that maybe just needs some guidance. Um, can you handle, uh, you work with those kids too? Absolutely, I work with those kids and those adults. Um, but I do oh, tell adults people- adults too. Uh, <laughs> yes, so I tell people up front, you know, um, well, I, you know, I let people sing for me or whatever, but I tell everybody up front, now I'm not gonna turn you into, and I say, you know, who's your favorite singer? And they say, you know, Whitney Houston, Stevie Wonder, or, you know, I don't know, all these people, and uh, Billy Joel. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm never gonna be able to turn you into either of those people, but I can help you to become better with your own instrument. So wherever you start, you know, you can grow from if you put in the work. So, and that's where I come in. And, some things are easier than others, but. Um, <laughs> well, so it's just like any student, you have to, they have to, you know, some need more work than others, but the drive I'm sure and the passion for it 
um, as long as their expectation is, like you said, that they're not going to be the next Whitney Houston um, yeah. or whoever is popular now, that's definitely more my era. Uh, what do you? What's one of the first things that you do? Do you do? You know, you've seen the movies and the TV where they practice. Um, they sing the scales. What do you do when a student comes in after they've given you their performance? And then what are some of the first lessons that you're giving them? Mm, some of the first lessons. Now, I'm pretty like non-traditional. So I am really into, do you actually listen to music? Because I find that a lot of people want to play music. They want to sing music, but they don't listen to music. And especially because we have all these devices and, you know, radio is, you know, everybody has their own personal playlist and all. And I find that people don't listen to music as much as I did when I was younger. So I'm like, so well, they first don't thing listen to it. Do you mean like listen and understand it? Or do you mean actually listen? Just listen. I'm not even talking about listen like a musician. That's going to come later. But, you know, do you know any songs? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Sadly, a lot of people don't know any songs, but then that's good for me because I get to say, well, here are the songs I love. So let's listen to those. Um, but once we do that, you know, we work on, um, like you say, the scales and all, we work on rhythm, um, but we do that in unconventional ways. You know, I've had kids to play video games and we, um, you know, there's a rhythm to winning, just like there's a rhythm to sounding sure. good. Um, so we do a lot of that. And, oh, my favorite is the boxing gloves. I have two boxing sets of boxing gloves. gloves. Yes, I have two sets of boxing gloves in my studio. And sometimes parents come in and they're like, say what? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> oh, we're working on our rhythm. We're working on our breathing. Because for singing and playing, we have to be able to, you know, uh, control our breathing. And so can you sing and, you know, do this? And we work on you know, just basic things like the music alphabet. Can you say it backwards while we're punching? You know, so we do a lot of different things. That's so cool. You know, I, I know that breathing's important um, and I, appre I appreciate it. It's, people think it's easy, it's not. It's, not. Uh, you really, it's like any other muscle, you have to practice, you have to exercise it. Um, and I, I think that's really cool. The whole boxing thing, can, can you teach, uh, somebody with no rhythm, how to, how to understand rhythm. It's, to me, mm -hmm. I can hear it, but I don't know if I could move it. Well, I've seen some people <laughs> that are rhythmless. And yeah. um, like, again, we can work on anything. And I've seen like some of these non-conventional um, ways of doing things to help people really get better at it. Love it. All right, so what are you doing you personally, Dana, what are you personally doing, not business, uh, to stay positive, to stay creative, because you're obviously a creative, to stay positive personally so that you can continue to develop and grow in the quarantine lockdown. You can continue to be such a positive influence on your students. What are you personally doing? Well, um, what I going to say is not very popular, but I am totally on the outside of the be super productive, do as much as you can and more and keep going, 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 going. I don't do that. So I have, um, I'm really protective of my peace and calm. So I just, you know, tell myself to lower my expectation of how much can be done in a day or in a given amount of time. And I just try to accept it. And, you know, I'm, I'm one with the list that never stops. Right. So I've just gotten myself down to in this quarantine, if I can do the one thing on the list, I'm good. And I, I really think that this quarantine life is a very stressful as far as there's no stopping because you're in your same place, your same physical space the whole day. So it's hard to know when one thing ends and another begins. Oh gosh, that's such a great point. Uh, that's such a great point. Let's talk about that a little bit. You're 100% you're right. I think for most people, their home was their respite away from the stress of work. And now they're constantly living and working in the place that used to be their safe haven, their place to actually take that respite and rest. I hadn't thought about that, but that's really true. 
So no wonder the stress level, you would think it would be less because, oh, we all get to work from home. But in reality, we're constantly working because now work and home are in the exact same place. Fascinating. I hadn't thought about that before. Maybe that's why I drink, Dana. I'm not uh, sure. Well, <laughs> so I'll do what we have to do. <laughs> so what's your favorite music to sing? Oh, my favorite music to sing. Jeez, oh, I just like music. Um, it's soul, soul, soul music and gospel, I'd say. Gospel. You yeah, like it because, go ahead. I love jazz too, so it's, it's a lot. Jazz is such a, you know, I, I find people either love or hate jazz. And I think that if they take a little bit of time to understand it, uh, it's just one of the most unique, amazing um, music genres there is. But a lot of people don't get it. Uh, so I would encourage them to take a look at it again when we all get back together or, hey, listen, you can spend your time going to YouTube and looking at jazz videos, jazz musicians. Absolutely. There's so much that we can be doing instead of finishing Netflix is my big joke. Everybody <laughs> has finished, they've all finished Netflix and what are we going to do? Um, so I know I asked you to put you on the spot earlier and I said, I would, you know, when we have somebody who's got talent, who teaches, I want to hear a few bars. I, I I'd love to be entertained so I can be distracted from the insanity for a few minutes. Uh, you had no idea other than the two minutes before we went live that I was gonna ask you to do that. So you can respectfully decline. Um, but I think it would be really cool for people to hear somebody with your gift um, sing a few bars for us. All right, I'll be happy to, thank you. Yeah. I always tell my students, the minute you tell someone you play an instrument or you sing, they're gonna say, okay, show me. So you have to have the songs ready, you know? Um, although sometimes we tell people things and we not, we ourselves aren't ready. <laughs> That's so, so true. Thank you for that two minutes so I could get myself ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have just thrown it at you. I'm glad I thought about it though, where I could have just thrown it at you. So um, yeah, so we'd love to hear some. I'd love to hear a little bit. All right, so this song is uh, L-O-V-E Love. And I think as we're all quarantined and we're not able to, you know, meet up with our friends in person and our families like we used to, um, it, it, it just helps us to remember how important it, it is to tell people that we love them and show them. I find myself doing so much more of that on social media now. So, um, L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that I adore. So love, love, love. Woo, I loved it. Truly, I love that song. I didn't know, I should have known that that was what the name of that song was, but I heard it in a million movies. It's a good old standard. It's wonderful. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, how do people reach you? How do people find out more about your online lessons and your music? How do they how do they reach out to Dana Rice? So I'm Dana Rice Music Everywhere. So Facebook, Instagram is where I am the most, but I'm also over on Twitter. So and all you have to remember is Dana Rice Music and my dot com is danaricemusic.com. Love it. So um I have a couple of events coming up if if I can share those. Please, yes. So um, we normally have uh, annual concerts really big. It's called Big Dreams Concert. And it is April 19th. So not this Sunday, which is Easter. It's the following Sunday. And it's going to be online. I could not bring myself to cancel something that's called Big Dreams because people are feeling like, some people are feeling like their dreams have been canceled because of this. And so we're here to say that, no, your big dreams are not canceled. Um, we are still you know, working towards big dreams and we're gonna have a concert about it on April 19th. So if you follow me anywhere, danaricemusic.com, you can get the details and how to sign up for the mailing list. So you know where to um, view us online on April 19th. That, that's your event, right? April 19th? Yes. that's Big April dreams. 19th. Yes. Um, we dreams. also have a virtual open mic that we're doing for people. It's free and it's, it's online as well. Um, but just you can be an audience member, just watch and enjoy the music, or you can be a performer. Open mic. Okay, so I'm fascinated by this. I've always wanted to do one of those. So oh, yeah. maybe I will um, figure out how to partake 
and show. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. I think open mic is such a cool way. I mean, I think so many talent, uh, talented people are discovered that way. And even if your goal is not to be discovered, you still get to express yourself, mm -hmm. your gifts, your talents. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks. Dana Rice Music, Dana Rice. Sign up for her April 19th uh, Big Dreams event and look for all of her events coming up, including the open mic. And if you want to start your lessons, why not start now? What else do you have to do? Follow that dream. So thank you so much, Dana, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ted. You're Peace enjoying. Time. Thank you. And thanks to Hap McMullen again for the intro. Thank you, Hap. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye.